Hello everybody, welcome back to the Ash and Stone channel. My name is Chris and today I'm going to show you how I went about painting my Earthmark humans. Starting from a black undercoat, the first colour I'm going to put on is Vallejo Basic Skin Tone. And I'm just going to slather that all over the areas of skin on the model. So the faces, the hands, and definitely make sure you get the back of the neck. This is quite a light colour going over a black undercoat, so it is going to take a couple of coats to build up a nice solid colour. It'll take a little while to dry, so in the meantime I'm going to move on to the trousers, and I'm going to paint those with Vallejo US Grey. I'm just going to slap that on, I'm not going to worry about being particularly tidy, because at this early stage it doesn't matter if I go over the lines at all. Once we're done here, we're going to go ahead and grab some Army Painter Flesh Wash, and we're going to apply that over all of the areas we've painted with the skin tone. Again, we don't have to worry about being tidy at all. It's going to take a little while for that wash to dry, so in the meantime I'm going to grab the Vallejo Burnt Cadmium Red, and we're going to start painting the tabard, or sleeveless coat, or whatever you interpret that middle layer as. I've chosen to use both blue and red as the army colours of these guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this tabard up into four quarters, two in the front, two in the back, and paint those red and blue. Speaking of blue, let's grab the Vallejo Prussian Blue, and we're going to use that to fill in the other two quarters of the figure's coat. We need to start being careful here, as we want to create a nice defined line between the two colours. Though there's still a little bit of back and forth, so if you make a mistake at this stage, it's not the end of the world. The eagle-eyed among you may have noted the spillage of blue onto the trousers. This is easily removed with a damp brush. You just pick up the excess paint and wipe it away. Too easy. While that dries, grab your black and we're going to work on the figure's eyes. With a steady hand and a small brush, we're going to draw a horizontal line using the black across the figure's eye. If you're having trouble keeping your hand steady, what you can do is you can press them together, and by pressing them together, you'll help stabilise them against each other, and hopefully stop your brush shaking all over the show. Next up is the white, and we're going to dot in the whites of the eyes using small vertical motions of the brush. Take your time, and don't forget to breathe. To me, the eyes of a figure add a heck of a lot of life to it, and I think it's well worth putting the time in to practice doing your eyes. Next up, it's back to Vallejo Basic Skin Tone. And we'll be using this to highlight all the skin areas. So, the nose, the cheekbones, the ears, back of the neck, the fingers, all that sort of stuff. One place I always avoid highlighting though, is the bottom lip. Now this way it gives you a nice redder sort of colour to the bottom lip and makes it stand out from the rest of the face. Looking good. Right, next up we're going to grab the Army Painter Red Tone, and we're going to use that to apply some shading to the red areas of the cloth we painted earlier. We're going to put on a reasonable amount, and we're going to try and avoid putting it on the blue and grey areas. The effect isn't fantastic on this figure because the areas of cloth are so flat, but on others with deeper folds, it's going to really add some nice shading. Next up is Army Painter Blue Tone, and we're going to do the same thing, but on the blue. Surprise! That's going to take a little while to dry, so next up is Vallejo Iraqi Sand, and we'll be using this to paint the tunic. So we'll be painting the sleeves, and there's often a little piece sticking out the bottom of the long coat or tabard, and we're going to hit that as well. 
I've also used this color for spear shafts. So if your model has a spear, go ahead and paint that as well. Just like the skin tone, this is a very light color, so it may take a couple of coats to get a nice even coverage over the black undercoat. While we let that dry, we're going to go back to our Prussian blue and our burnt cadmium red. And we're going to use each of those colors to reapply the base coat to the areas of cloth on the long coat or tabard, just leaving the wash in the recesses for the darkest shading. On this particular model, with large areas of flat cloth, you're going to end up repainting most of it. Next up, we're going to grab our Iraqi sand again, and we're going to mix a little bit of this in with the two base colours at maybe about a 4 to 1 ratio, just to create a lighter shade. And we're then going to use that to highlight the cloth, focusing mainly on the bottom half. We're then going to add a bit more Iraqi sand to that, so it's around about a 2 to 1 mix, and we're going to highlight the very bottom of the cloth a bit. And as you can see, rather than going to a brighter colour with our highlights, we've ended up with a more faded and worn look to our cloth. After the red, it's the exact same process with the blue. You've probably noticed I missed that little bit of the tunic at the bottom there, so we'll touch that up quickly. And then we'll grab our Army Painter Soft Tone and give the tunic a wash. Once that's dry, we're going to go back to our Iraqi sand and we're going to highlight the cloth of the tunic. This is nice and easy, we're just going to highlight the peaks of the folds and leave the wash down in the recesses. When we're done there, it's on to black, which I'll use to paint the armour and the sword and the helmet. To add variation to all the human infantry I've got, I have painted some of the other armour in beige brown or German camouflage black brown. And that just helps to break up the models and make them a little bit less uniform. Although, let's be fair, they're still pretty uniform. Next up, Vallejo Black Grey. Which I'm sure you will not be surprised, we're going to use to highlight the black parts on the armour. And then just like the cloth on the coat, we're going to mix in a little bit of Iraqi sand with our Black Grey. At about a 4 to 1 ratio. And we're going to apply that on the very edges and high points of the armour. Now that's ended up very grey as opposed to black. So grabbing some army painted dark tone. We're going to apply a wash over the trousers and then over the armour. In the case of the trousers, this is just going to add some nice shading to them. In the case of the armour, it's going to bring all those tones together and darken it down. And make it look a lot more black. With that done, it's on to everybody's favourite, Vallejo Chocolate Brown. And we're going to hit all the leather parts. So the bag, the belts, the boots, and the braces. I'm pretty sure I say this every time, but don't worry about getting a solid coat with this, as we're going for a worn and distressed leather look. And any black showing through is going to help that out. And I've decided this guy's going to have brown hair, so I'll take this opportunity to paint his beard and his hair. If you've seen any of my painting videos before, the next part is not going to come as any surprise. It's on to flat earth. And we focus this mainly on the edges of the leather parts and the areas that are going to receive the most wear. As per usual, we're not worried about being neat, as any blotchiness or untidiness will just add to that weathered and distressed look of the leather. When it comes to highlighting the hair though, we want to be a little bit more careful, and I use a finer brush for this stage. And what I'm going to do is just highlight the high parts of the hair. The front of the chin is a bit flat. Uh, you pretty much got the choice here whether you want to have that shaved as a bare chin, or you could paint it as beard, but if you're going to paint it as beard, you just want to put a few vertical strokes in to add the impression of there being hair there. I'm also going to add some red dyed leather, so to do that we're going to use Vallejo wood grain as a base. 
and this will be applied to the knife sheath and to the flat panels of the helmet. I've found a plain steel helmet here, it looks very boring, but if you add leather to the panels of the Spangen helm, it makes it look so much more visually interesting. Alright, next up is Vallejo Orange Brown. And this gets applied in the same way as we applied the flat brown earlier. We splotch it on the areas of the most wear. When that's done, we're going to follow it up with Vallejo Dark Sand. And this gets put on fairly sparingly on the areas that see the most wear, such as the toes of the boots, the tip of the knife sheath, or any other exposed areas that are likely to rub or catch or get worn on anything. I find with this step, you're better off with lots of little dots or small scratches rather than large blobs. So it pays just to be a little bit more careful with this step than we were in the previous step of doing the leather. With that done, some of the colour shifts there look really extreme, so we're going to grab some Army Painter Strong Tone, and we're going to apply that over all of the areas of leather, and that's going to bring all those tones together, and make them look much more cohesive. Next up, I'm going to paint the little mantle he's got on his shoulders, or it would be a hood if the figure was wearing a hood. I like to use something here that's not too bright, but is going to give a little bit of individuality to each of the figures. So I've got a range of colours I normally use, something like English Uniform, or Japanese Uniform World War II, or Russian Green, or US Grey, and I just take my pick between these fairly neutral sort of colours. So there's nothing revolutionary going on here, what I'm going to do is give it a base coat of my chosen colour, and then give it an appropriate wash. In this case, it'll be Army Painter and Military Shader. While that dries, I'm going to pick out the handle of the knife with a little bit of Iraqi sand. And then it's on to re-establishing the base colour, Russian green, on the mantle. Followed by highlight with a little bit of Iraqi sand mixed in. Once that's done, it's on to the metallics. And for that, we're going to use Vallejo steel. The areas we need to hit here are the sword, the bands on the helmet, and the belt buckle. And then we grab our Army Painter Dark Tone again and we're going to give all of those metal areas a wash. That'll take a little while to dry but once it does we're going to hit the model with a coat of Tamiya Flat Clear to add a protective layer and to reduce the shine from that black wash. Then it's back to the Vallejo Steel to add some highlights and some shine back to the steel areas. This time we're going to pick out the rivets on the armour, as well as adding highlights to the sword, the helmet and the belt buckle. Picking out the rivets is fairly straightforward. We're going to use a fine brush and we're just going to make small vertical motions with the end of it, just like we do for dotting in the whites of the eyes. And we're just going to pick out the high areas that are the rivets on the back of the armour and the front. Once that's done, we can move on to basing. I'll be using grout. Uh, I've got another video somewhere around here that you can watch about that. And then we can move on to the shields. So I prime mine on the sprue. The front is black. The back is leather brown, both from Army Painter. And then using a couple of different browns, I'll be painting the planks on the back of the shields just to add a bit of variation to the colours of the timber there. Then the back of the shield is given a wash with Army Painter Strong Tone, just to pick out all those little details. But that's as far as we're going to go with the back of the shields, because you're not going to be able to see most of it, so there's no point in spending too much time doing too much detail on them. Then we grab our two army colours again, and we're going to use exactly the same steps we used on the cloth on the front of the shields. And I'll just break the shields up into some simple designs, so there's a bit of variation among the unit. The next step is then to paint all of the shield bosses with steel, then give them a wash with dark tone, and finally a spray with Tamiya Flat Clear. Once dry, we can then clip the shield from the sprue and take the mould lines off with a knife. 
The shields are then glued to the figure's hand using super glue. Make sure you get them around the right way. The big end goes at the bottom. Then grab some Iraqi sat weight. No, I've changed my mind. Grab yourself some German camouflage beige World War II. And we're going to use this to paint the raw hide along the edge of the shield. Then using army painted dark tone, we're going to put a wash over the rivets around the edge of the shield. And then we'll finish the shield off by painting the rivets steel and giving the boss a quick highlight. Paint the rim of the base black and we are done. Here's the 10 man unit as a whole. So, thanks for sticking around. I do hope you have found this video useful. And we shall see you next time. Cheers.